Good evening, everyone, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I'd like to begin by highlighting some of the key activities being implemented by Amman Chamber of Commerce. Amman Chamber of Commerce is considered the largest uh, chamber in the country. We have around 50,000 members under our umbrella. Our doors are always open for cooperation between all everybody, Chamber of Industry, Amcham, all other associations from the culture industry. So Amman Chamber of Commerce doors are open. We are all ears to listen how we can improve and ease the doing business in Jordan. Uh, let me just introduce quickly our uh, panelists. Uh, His Excellency Mr. Karim Hawar, uh, a recognized leader in many government and private sector positions, including Optimizia and Hawar Energy, founding member of IDAMA, Oasis 500, as well as serving as BODS of uh, civil society organization. I cannot talk much about Karim, honestly. Yeah, he, it's not easy. Uh, Mr. Kaf, you know, I cannot really present to you. Uh, Mr. Kaf, you currently serve as CEO of the Social Security Investment Fund, and we are really proud of that. We as private sector feel safe when somebody like you is in charge of such an association and investment. Following a prominent career in the financial sector as Deputy, of, uh, Deputy Governor of the Central Bank of Jordan and VP of the Arab Bank. It gives me a great pleasure when I talk about this you know. Uh, our dear friend and our dear partner, Mr. Sunal, you know, I think it's everyone's duty is here to take Sunal and his cooperation by hand to try to facilitate things for that. On behalf of, the, of Jordan and Jordan industry, we thank you for whatever you have done and what you will do for, the, for Jordan as a country. Thank you very much, Mr. Sunal. Mr. Sunal is the first investor in the textile and apparel sector in Jordan. His company, named Classic Fashion, was established around 2000, 2003, growing from 300 workers to currently around, employing around 24,000. Again, I thank you and your staff for your job great done. It's perfectly done. Thank you very much. Our last panelist, the youngest guy, huh? <laughs> Firaz Abu Shah, a success, a Jordanian success story that we can all be proud of. Started uh, very, very small and grew, grew to the management of that company. Grew because they do have the will to success. They want to succeed. They don't want to stay small. Petra Engineering. Please give a hand to Petra Engineering. Not to <laughs> Petra Engineering home had uh, grown. It's really a success story again. A model of innovation that every Jordanian should be proud of. You know, for me, when I see Petra, I feel like you know I am the owner. It's not only because this is a Jordanian success story that started from very small and this is grew now, and you can see Petra equipment all over the world. Again, for us, we thank you and your staff, everybody at Petra, starting from your CEO to the management and the employees for a job great you done. Um, I will start my first question with uh, my dear friend, Mr. Awar. For us, I am just proud of Mr. Awar, from your side. Can you share with us your views on the private sector role in supporting, uh, supporting the implementation of national economic development plans? Uh, thank you, Barak. It's a great honor and privilege to be here uh, with such a distinguished uh, panel and to have uh, two of the most successful Jordanian enterprises that are taking advantage of the free trade area agreement with the United States and selling into one of the most sophisticated markets. This is what we aspire for the Jordanian enterprises uh, to reach in terms of sophistication and uh, quality of products and services. Um, I had the good fortune of uh, being involved in starting many of the business associations in Jordan. I'm a proud uh, 
co-founder of Java or a founding member of Java. I'm the founding uh, chairman of Intaj, the Information Technology Association of Jordan, and the founding chairman of IDAMA, which is the Energy, Water, and Environment Business Association. Uh, and if I may focus on on IDAMA in particular as the most recent one and one that uh, affects all the private sector when we look at the cost of energy. How can Jordanian firms compete if the cost of energy is high? Uh, so IDAMA started when there was no private sector participation in the energy sector and in particular in renewable energy. Mm -hmm. So IDAMA worked on changing the legislation to introduce the renewable energy and energy efficiency law that allowed for private sector participation in renewable energy projects. We've come a long way, we've scored a lot of success. Actually, in fact, by the year 2020, towards probably the end of it, we will reach 20% of our uh, energy that will be generated from renewable sources. This is in line with the European Union, so that is a major achievement for Jordan as a nation. Uh, today, unfortunately, you will hear uh, a lot of criticism of the various projects that have uh, come online. Uh, and the major reason behind that is that the government had made certain projections for demand for electricity that was not met and largely not met by the industrial sector because the economic growth projections were not met either. Unfortunately, in Jordan, we have had many factories that their primary uh, dependence on energy uh, and that cost uh, makes it or breaks it for them. So those companies have gone out of business. If you, you might remember that Jordan had uh, factories that manufactured ceramics, all of those have shut down. We had uh, probably four factories that were manufacturing wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. Three of those have shut down. So many of those factories did not find the environment competitive or that allowed them to be competitive uh, and to be able to export. So today I, I take it to heart when some blame the renewable energy as the cause of the problem. On the contrary, renewable energy is a solution, but the mismanagement of our electricity sector at large is the problem. The problem is that we also had disruption of the gas supply after the so-called Arab Spring that led to the increase in our energy cost as a nation while the government was subsidizing uh, the price of electricity and other fuel derivatives that resulted in a huge uh, deficit in our uh, budget and this is a burden that we are as Jordanian citizens carrying today and will be carried by future generations and this needs to be addressed in its totality and not just to uh, look at one issue. So, uh, to your question, uh, this is a true private-public partnership that started uh, with such an association and there are many more successful examples that allowed for over 1,700 companies to be registered as providers of renewable energy solutions in Jordan, which is substantial. You know, this has been created in less than 10 years. Uh, unfortunately, I think many of those companies now will be shutting down, but that's the nature of this uh, business. But we hope that the future will be a promising one for creating jobs in the private sector rather than creating jobs in government. Thank you, Mr. Kawad. Actually, I had another question, but he did answer it. He answered both of them. Oh, so we'll skip the second. Uh, Karim, thank you very much, Your Excellency. Uh, we'll go to Ms. Saqqaf, Lord Saqqaf. Again, you know, we all feel safe when we see somebody like you owning our investment. Now I'll make you feel much safer yes. when I see that. I'll tell you the numbers. Okay. <laughs> uh, Your Excellency, in your professional point of view, what are the investment opportunities and risks in Jordan mm -hmm. in light of, of the ongoing regional and global situation? Yes. I'd just like to hear some minor comments if you can. 
maybe I would start with uh, my new position. I will, it's not new anymore, it's uh, for 10 months now. Uh, with the Social Security Investment Fund heading this uh, institution, Oops, the biggest investment uh, uh, fund in Jordan, uh, with uh, around 15 billion uh, US dollar uh, total assets. Um, uh, our investments uh, are uh, diversified in uh, uh, so many sectors with partnership with the private uh, sector, such as uh, uh, the uh, owning shares in the uh, 88 uh, public shareholding companies, uh, in the uh, partnership with the uh, government through the leasing uh, company, and which enabled us to uh, finance several projects like uh, two hospitals, uh, a BRT light uh, uh, project, Amman uh, Zarqa, uh, the Madonna uh, Customs uh, Building, and uh, others. This was a very uh, successful uh, PPP uh, projects uh, where, where we were able to uh, finance. Uh, we established the two uh, um, development areas in Mafraq and Erbet, uh, where we uh, able uh, to in, uh, attract around uh, 48 uh, opportunities or investment opportunities, foreign and local. And uh, this we were able to create around 2,080 uh, permanent jobs. Um, looking at the investment uh, environment in Jordan, uh, uh, I think there is um, the um, uh, economy is used to the government, the, the initiation of the government in initiation any project. But with the fiscal problems and uh, let's say tightness in the budget, uh, uh, public budget, uh, the private sector is not taking uh, the role. Uh, I think the private sector should be uh, more uh, initiative. Uh, maybe the uh, uh, political situation or uh, the uncertainty in the market, this is the main risk that I see in uh, not uh, investing in other. Maybe also uh, the legislation uh, platform is not stable. Uh, we have seen several uh, changes in the uh, laws, uh, which made also the private sector uh, hesitant in uh, investing more. But moving forward, I think there is a room uh, there is a lot of opportunities and our uh, uh, experience at the SSIF was a very successful one in terms of investment in locally because we're not uh, allowed to invest outside Jordan unless we have to take the uh, prior approval of the Prime Ministry and with coordination of Central Bank. So all our uh, money is invested locally and we were able to achieve good returns, acceptable, let's say. So uh, there are challenges, uh, but still uh, there are room to invest for private sector. But it's time for private sector to initiate uh, the projects to move on because the government is uh, now uh, not, not taking that initiative as before, let's say. Thank you. I, thank you very much, uh, My second question, domestic investors do have a concern about investing in Jordan. Yes. What can the government do to, to minimize that risk for domestic investors? It depends. Uh, the problem is that you see that um, uh, maybe uh, they should diversify. There should be diversification in the investments. Most, uh, for example, the industry uh, is a little bit uh, suffering from the high energy as. Uh, our colleague here uh, mentioned previously. But uh, there are room for uh, services, for tourism, for energy, and for uh, renewable energy infrastructure. Uh, maybe uh, giving these uh, uh, industries much more uh, facilities or uh, uh, talking, not yet, you cannot deal, sometimes the government is dealing with all the projects at the same level. They have, there should be some special treatments to some special uh, energy uh, industries in order to see them more promoting and uh, uh, moving forward. Uh, 
um, and focusing more, we say that Jordan is a service economy, so I think we should uh, focus more on services, tourism, and energy. Thank you. My last question. Uh -huh. Woman empowerment in this society. <laughs> What can we do as private sector to enhance the role of women as economic actors in Jordan? If you look at the success of Abcham, Mr. Bobana is my CEO, but the work is being done by some great ladies who are around the world. How can we enhance the role of women in the economic, in the economic economy? Um, I think this is a very good question, especially when you know that uh, uh, the number of ladies or women graduated from the, gov uh, from the universities in Jordan are 56% relative to the total number of the graduates. But when you look at the uh, women in labor force, you, uh, they, uh, the number does not exceed 17% now. So where are women going? They're staying home. Some of them are staying home voluntarily, not because they're not finding uh, the jobs, and others are, uh, are not finding the, uh, let's say, the, uh, the, the, the good or the, the, the environment, the enabling environment for them to work. Uh, it, maybe uh, we should do more awareness in this regard, because most of the women are going to uh, are studying in the universities uh, the uh, for example business languages uh, they're not going to the scientific streams so that's why most of them are when they graduate they look for uh, positions in the government or in the teach education or health sectors which are saturated with number of employees while you don't find these uh, for example in finance in, in engineering uh, medicine uh, they don't comp uh, they don't this is the uh, main obstacle regarding the um, uh, let's say when talking about women the other obstacle is the transportation many uh, most of the jobs are being uh, uh, the, uh, in Amman, and people in the governorate are not able to come because of uh, lack of uh, transportation. The third uh, obstacle that I see, for example, the daycare, uh, when women uh, want to, uh, the married women, they want to go to work, there are not suitable daycares, or the suitable ones are very expensive for them, so they choose to stay at home. Uh, until their uh, children are grown up, and at that time they would have uh, lost the channels with the, uh, with the field, with the working field, so they don't find uh, enough uh, jobs. Um, I think these are the main obstacles that the the type of education, the transportation problems in Hamid Jordan, and the other one is the. Uh, daycare and the enabling environment. If the woman doesn't have a, a supporting system, it's very hard for her to be able to, uh, to work for long hours and compete with uh, men at, at work. So uh, maybe flexible hours, uh, working from home, uh, so many things can be done by the government and by the private sector if they want to increase the number of women. Unfortunately, with the unemplo high unemployment rate uh, now, uh, it's not easy for even for uh, the, uh, let's say, companies or uh, employers to find ways uh, because it's, it's better for them you know, if uh, there is a lot of demand and the supply, uh, let's say that the supply is very high. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. As I'm Champ Jordan, our partners would like to hold a special session concerning women empowerment in the society. If you allow me, Mr. Rabai. We are all ears at I'm Champ. would be more than happy, especially that I'm uh, now the president of the International Women Forum, which is a Jordan chapter, which uh, consists of 46 of uh, achievers. Uh, message with us and uh, many Luma uh, was uh, the previous uh, also president. 
uh, we try to uh, build the networking between women and try to educate uh, uh, and train uh, people in the second line to enable them to uh, be uh, uh, ready to, to be leaders in the society and we were able to train around 220 people from private and public sector and uh, different sector. So we'll be more than happy to... Uh, yes, I remember. But we do more. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, I go to our next guest, a dear friend, I guess actually a dear friend, and a partner, a true partner for Amcham, Mr. Sunal Kumar. Mr. Kumar was one of the first investors in textiles and the peer receptor in Jordan. Uh, I cannot really talk much about him, his history and his success story can really talk about what they have done for Jordan, number of employees, uh, investment. My first question, is, my dear friend, can you please share with us your views on the evaluation of the textile, the textile sector in Jordan and its potential and your ongoing initiatives to attract more Jordanian workers? No, it's not. First of all, good afternoon to everyone. I'm, I'm so happy that I'm given the opportunity to talk about myself and the company that I've created in this country. I'm in this industry uh, for the last 20, almost 30 years. I mean, I started my career in this industry in 1991. And I came to Jordan in the year 2000. And between 1991 and 2000, till 2003, when I started classic fashion, I was working for people. And by practice, I'm a CPA. So I started as a finance manager in all the garment factories in Dubai in 1991. And then possibly I got into operations in the marketing and uh, I possibly expertised this particular, inter I mean, the, the, the trade. And th th that would be possible only because I think this is possible with everyone as long as the people are committed. They do have a passion for what they do and they give their 100%. These three are the criteria which anybody and everybody has to follow if they really want to achieve something in life. I uh, heard in the earlier sessions, we were talking about creating exports, creating jobs, creating enterprises. But all this is possible only if the people who are ready for it and the people are there to give their 100% for it. If that is not the case, all these organizations, the Chamber of Commerce, anybody and everybody can keep trying, but uh, will not be able to move much on that direction. So my possibly uh, simple piece of my experience, the sharing of my experience is passion, commitment, and giving 100% of what you have. 100% uh, of the people can vary, it doesn't matter. But as long as you give your 100%, definitely you'll achieve the goals down the line. That is what life taught me, and that is what life teaching me today. So to come back to your question. I came in this country in 2000 to set up a factory for one of the business houses back in Dubai. And in 2003, that particular enterprise came up with a team of managers, so I decided to hand over the business to them. And I thought, I did, at that time, I spent more than 15 years in this industry. So I thought, why shouldn't I give a try to start something of my own? And that is how Classic Fashion was created. So when I decided to create the company, definitely was not having all the money in this world. And my investment was just $500,000. That is what I earned over a period of 15 years working in Middle East on a, on a senior position, on a profit sharing uh, equations with the business people that I dealt with. Put all the money in, it was a huge call because if it goes, what is going to go is 15 years of my you know, sweat. But this country is, was, was great, is still great. When I say this, all this country needs a dynamic policy, a dynamic law, which is severely lacking, and that is what is stopping an, an investment in this country, or that is not what is not encouraging investment in this country, or to grow the business where I am in. I mean, today, the government sector is doing around $1.7 billion of export, majorly to US. This has happened over a period of almost 20 years. Whereas 
20 years this business could have been with the nature of demand the countries like US or Europe do have this industry could have been a $5 billion industry if not more. And a $5 billion industry should have created five times more jobs than what is there today. So instead of focusing into creating jobs and creating a dynamic law to support the investment and getting more people in, the enterprise student I was hearing about it, Lloyd Sahar is a good friend of mine, and I'm sure that he will be able to deliver subject to the law, the lawmakers, the government, support the whole cost of this call of creating enterprise for Jordan. So what I did in 2003 with just 300 people, two production lines, that is how I started. And my sales was just $2 million. But over a period of 15 years, between 2003 and 2018, I could cross my exports over half a billion dollars. I did $501 million last year, and we are heading towards $600 million this year. And we have an ambitious plan to grow at the rate of $100 million year after year and reach a billion dollar company by 2024. But for me to reach there, that definitely I'm looking for a dynamic law, uh, changes in, in law regulations because with the current law uh, and this current set of people's mentality, uh, it is absolutely difficult for me to grow because I am stopped. I am using my energy and my resources to tackle small, small issues small small people create in our you know bureau, bureaucratic uh, in the chain i mean i won't blame them because that is what the law says here even including the senior people they are afraid to take a decision because if they take a decision sometimes you know the anti-corruption bureau will be going after them for hunter spending and this, this i heard from one of the very senior person 175 JD was spent on buying possibly a nice decorative coffee set in his office. He was summoned by the by the uh, court to give explanation for that. So people don't take decisions because they are paid anyway. They are paid anyway whether you they, they take decisions or they don't take decisions. So why should they, they take decisions and create the problem? So the only way this can change is there should be dynamism. In, in the in lawmakers in, in in the law, and the private sector should be heard and should be supported because they should look at the bigger picture. The bigger picture is to create job. It is not to go after the private sector and how we can stop him, how we can find him. Because if we talk about customs, we are put into unnecessary simple simple fines. Simple, I mean, fine for simple simple reasons. The whole equation is when they find, they collect the fines, they get a share of it. But doing that, what they're doing is actually killing an enterprise, killing an industry, killing a person who is committed to create job for the people in the country. As classic fashion today, we have created 4,000 plus jobs for the Jordanians. I can happily say that out of the 4,000 jobs, more than 3,000 jobs are created in the rural areas of Jordan. And I know for certain, if classic fashion won't create that job, these people are not going to have a job for their lifetime. So when a company like ours is committed to do that, why the bureaucracy should run after us, come after us, to say that, okay, fine, you know, when you do such large-scale operations, definitely there can be some slips. If we are doing something really bad, come after us. I mean, punish us. But if there is a slip in the whole process that we do when we do such an operations, I mean, we, should, we need to see the law and the lawmakers to come along and support and enterprises like classic fashion, not only me, enterprises like classic fashions who are committed to create jobs and we have, we have our 18 the factory, today we have 17 factories, 11 factories are, are in Al-Hassan and seven fa six factories are in the rural areas of Jordan and the seventh one is coming again in Karak. With that, we should be creating another thousand more jobs for the Jordanians. So we are, we are committed to create jobs for Jordanians and every hundred million dollars growth that I said is going to create another thousand jobs for Jordanians. So today, by September, we will have 5,000 Jordanians working for us. And by 2024, 10,000 Jordanians will be working for us. And this is possible. As I said, first, passion, commitment, give me 100% is a must for anyone. And once that is done, and the law and the regulators can support such enterprises, definitely this this is a very small country with 10 million people. So creating job for, you know, a million, not even a million, half a million jobs are created. I'm very sure that the country is taken care of. But, you know, that is missing only because
the directions and the people who are holding the positions to create jobs are lacking, you know, vision. Uh, my humble request is all of us put together, who's over in the bureaucracy, who's over in the government, the private sector put together, if they can work, definitely we can change the country. And I'm from India, but I think I'm more than a Jude Indian when, it, when we talk about creating jobs and, and creating, you know, uh, jobs for the Thank you. Talking about red tape, uh, two years ago, I know who classic fashion, but I never met Mr. Uh, Kumar. He imported two weighing scales, and I was representing the Jordan Sand, uh, representing the private sector at, at Jordan Sand and Anthropology, and it was like a, a ten thousand years dollar value of uh, weighing scales, and it usually have the. Uh, owner's manual in the English or Arabic as per the Jordanian uh, standard employee. So I said, man, this guy has employed over 600, 700 Jordanian, nothing will hurt. So I said, well, will you sign today? I will sign. I never met you. you know, I saw you once at the office. At, you know, sure. And they asked me to sign some payment. I said, I will sign it. You need to ease business. You need to, you need to help your, the, the investors to employ more Jordanians. I know we have to. We do have a lot of red tape, not a little, we do have a lot of red tape, but with people like you and investors like you, I think we can uh, overcome uh, our uh, problems. One of my questions was, what kind of support would you like, uh, would you like from the public sector? I think you mentioned that. I want to share about it. It's very simple, trust me. It's not like it's going to cost the country a lot. It's not going to cost the country anything. It is the mindset. I mean, the, the, the people in the bureaucracy, the people in the government, should come up with private sector to understand what exactly is going to help the private sector to help creating job for the people in the country. And that is what, it is just a mindset, nothing beyond a mindset. You know, in, I know you face a lot of daily uh, red tape. Use us as Hanjan, Chamber of Commerce, Chamber of Industry. Knock our door. Let us know if you have a problem. I'm sure we no, can. Though I said about the retribution, I talked about bureaucracy, uh, bureaucracy, I talked about dynamic law. Still, this is a great country. If it is not this country, there is no way that I could have done as what I'm doing today. Because I'm from India, it's just impossible for me to do what I replicate in this country. And I, I was, in, I'm still connected to all the Middle East countries because I started my career in Dubai and I was in Oman, in Qatar, in, in Bahrain. So I precisely know. I mean, comparing all these countries and the countries that I otherwise deal with, this is one of the best countries that a person can be. A small corrections, I mean, a, an outlook. I mean, majorly, I think it's not even the outlook and corrections, it's majorly because of the lack of experience and expertise and wisdom and vision. That is what is uh, creating all these bottlenecks. Uh, it can be corrected. The thing is, at the end of the day, all of us need to work together. It's just not the government sector or the public sector. It is the public private sector. We need to work together. We should have more shake hands than what we have today so that you know we can definitely change this country. For good. Again, I repeat, uh, AMCHAP and their partners would love to see more, more like Kumar, more like. Uh, I wish the enterprise Jordan and the Loy should be able to bring in. I mean, we actually we missed the boat if you talk about it. With whatever President Trump has created in China, and the investment has flown into Vietnam, into even Egypt, we couldn't grab one. Five or you know ten of investments like mine could have changed this industry. I'm talking about garments, unfortunately, because that is what I know. A five billion dollar industry which would have easily created another. 150,000 jobs for the Jordanians. Is it a great job? It's a great job. But the thing is, at the end of the day, you know, all the lower, middle, and upper management people are still from outside, even after the country is into this trade for the last 20 years. It's only because the country did not do what they're supposed to do. The first thing the country should have established a fashion technology institute. When the, the so called smart kids, who are into engineering or into MPAs or into that, if they would have gone and they should have taken a three or four or five years course, like what India do, like what any garment manufacturers do, I mean, in any country. This fashion technology institute, it's a three or five years course. Once they come out of it, they may start at the floor level. I mean, they start at the floor level maybe at 
300 or 400 JD, but they can climb into a thousand, thousand JD job in less than three years. And how many jobs in Jordan is offering in private sector this kind of an offer? And a company like us, we can engage maybe 200 to 300 people. So 200 to 300 people into a 700 or 1,000 JD jobs. I mean, this is, Jordan is missing this opportunity because Jordan did not create a fashion technology institute. Not to, I mean, late is always better than never. We should do it today. We should have done it 20 years back so that on the lower, at least lower and middle level management should have been by Jordanians today. And that should have created maybe 2,000 jobs of, you know, white collar job of 1,000. 2000 JD. I mean, that is a great thing. And Jordan missed that. You want to blame the investors as you can. But investors cannot do anything on Jordan. The country should have done that. This is what I said the country is lacking vision. If that, I mean, the country should hear that and they should adopt. At least from now it should start. I was talking this to a couple of platforms earlier. I look, at least I'm talking for the last two years. But unfortunately, we did not move an inch. It's time for us to move. Thank you. Uh, one of the good things in this country today, we have a new Minister of Labor. His name is Nidal, His Excellency Nidal Padayne. This is, sounds like music to his ears, I know that. It's with Amchan, with Mr. Padayne. Not you. Oh, Padayne, <laughs> Padayne, no, right? Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, we, we as Amchan, we'd be more than glad to take this initiative with you uh, to the Minister of Labor. See, how can we establish this classic fashion uh, institute? This I talked to the government two years back and I, I was ready to invest on board. All I said is, you know, without a government label, this is not going to work. It has to be an institute which needs to be recognized, not necessarily to be a classic fashion institute. It can be one of the, one of the curriculum in the universities in Jordan. Somebody has to do it, and we are there to give all the materials. We know precisely what are the what should be the curriculum material and how this can be done. Could have been done, you know, 20 years back. At least let us start today, so that I mean, time is. I mean, we have still we have the time to consolidate. Okay, we'll give the floor to Rose. Just very quickly, we're very excited about this idea. We met on Thursday with Jordan Fashion Week. And this is a core for something big that can happen in Jordan. We were able to showcase about 55 Jordanian designers that are experts in fashion. And the event was extremely successful. They, it is uh, established as an association. And uh, they are actually looking to cooperate with the different stakeholders and link, you know, we, uh, we are uh, connecting them with uh, organizations like Luminous, with the universities and so on for us to see how we can at least start it as a small academy uh, for the transfer of knowledge and for us to be able to brand Jordan as not only a, a country that can uh, manufacture uh, uh, garments but can also design. And the added value here at the export of services is major. Thank you, my dear Rose. Can I come on that? Yeah. Okay, fine. I mean, I definitely am quite happy to hear that we have a design institute. The second the question is demand versus supply. I mean, design should have been a later stage, and the initial stage should have been the, the things like care systems as part of design, but merchandising, and IE, industrial engineering, technical uh, knowledge, or the te I mean, technicians in the factory, which is a mechanical engineer who understands the machines and understand the process, the operation process by which you can set the machines in certain ways to have better productivity and the ease of productions. So it is the initial, the core subject should have been, you know, merchandising, IE, cans, and, you know, uh, you know technical support, or, you know, the, the, the machine maintenance and things like that. These areas, if they would have started like 20 years back, I am very sure at least 2,000 of the lower middle class or middle level managers or executives should have been subscribed by Jordanians by today. And Jordanians should have been the factory managers by now. I'm, I'm dying to get Jordanians as factory managers for my rural factories. I mean, I, I could manage three out of six, but three still is managed by migrants. 
definitely you should be doing it. But I don't have the, the thing is at the end of the day, you cannot be the right of a person. The job is not right of the person. The job is an obligation of the person. The right is to get the paycheck at the end of the month. But unfortunately here, people get confused with their right. They think job is their right. If job becomes a right, then we have to find somebody else to do the job because they're not going to do it. So this, the, 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 the mind shift is a must. Job is not anybody's right. Job is an obligation. Only, I mean, the, the right is the paycheck at the end of the month as per the terms. If they understand that concept very well, I think it's very easy to, to, to mold people to do this job in the right post -up. Thank you. Again, I'd like to thank you on behalf of the Jordanian private sector for uh, your comments and your uh, contribution. Our last guest, our lovely last guest, a dear friend, Firas Abusha, veteran engineer. Firas, my dear friend Firas, can you give us some insights on your growth prospects, especially, specifically in growing exports to the US and usually? Of course. Hi. Hello, everyone. It's good to be here. Uh, first of all, I'd like to just quickly agree with everything <laughs> my colleague said. I actually have a term for it. It's called BDS, bureaucratic BDS. This is what we're dealing with on a daily basis. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, back to the question at hand. Um, uh, I'd like to start with saying that we as Jordan, uh, if we want to export, we cannot, we no longer can depend on traditional markets. Uh, non traditional markets is the future because, as we all see, uh, the region is in uh, upheaval on a, on, a, on a yearly basis. The alliances change, trade agreements change. Logistical challenges come up, like Qatar, we were, we were shipping products to Qatar through Saudi. Uh, six days it would take us to get the product to Qatar. And now it takes us six to eight weeks because we have to go through uh, Aqaba, Aqaba, Salada, Salada to, uh, to Doha. So um, these markets which we are dependent on, I mean, we learned the hard way. When we first started our company in 87, we depended on two markets, uh, Iraq and Kuwait. In 1991, we almost went bankrupt because those two markets shut down overnight. So we had to rethink on what we want to do. We focused on Europe, we focused on the US market, we focused on North Africa, we focused on Sri Lanka, we focused on uh, Pakistan. Uh, so we always, we never left our eggs in one basket. And I believe that the Jordanian industry, their eggs are, they're focusing first of all on the traditional market, which is a few eggs. And they're also focusing on and relying on that these markets are going to research. Uh, but let's say for Iraq, Iraq is a great example uh, for our industry. Iraq was a great market before the war. Uh, now, after the alliances have changed and uh, things are getting better, it turns out that my product has a 30% tariff, which was never there before, uh, in order to, in, to enter Iraq, which basically I started my company to serve Iraq. So now, I cannot do that anymore. I can still compete on certain uh, high-end projects for oil and gas, but when it comes to traditional uh, like hotels, schools, hospitals, it's gonna take some time, it's gonna take a lot more effort, because I have to focus on those 30% uh, taxes. So. Uh, our secret sauce, again, is, is, is not just focusing on the traditional markets. We just opened our first, uh, we just sold our first job and we shifted it about a month ago to the Philippines. And uh, the Philippines is, is a great example of how, what we learned in the U.S. market. The U.S. market, um, oh sorry, the Filipino market is basically based on the U.S. spec. So for us it was an easy in. As soon as they knew that we export to the United States, we have the same specifications, the same components, the same designs, the same, let's say, engineering prowess, it was a no-brainer. So uh, I urge everyone to focus on markets where they can, they can exceed, they can, they can shine. I mean, why would someone come to Jordan? I mean, we ship, we ship products to Hawaii, we ship products to, I always say this, it's a, I say it's, a, it's one of our funny stories, that even Trump is our customer. Uh, eight years ago, before he was uh, president, but even Trump. Why would Trump buy a Jordanian product? Uh, especially now. But, uh, I mean, we work with NASA. We work with our biggest customer right now is Facebook. We've been working with them for the past six years, continuously. And that means a happy customer is a repeat customer. And they're finding ways to give us more work, finding ways to give us more, more, uh, more, more, more projects, not just in the United States. Worldwide, it opens doors left, right, and center. And for, I, I'd like to go back to Facebook. Facebook isn't, we didn't get the job because we were cheaper. We were 25% more expensive than our next year's competitor, but we were 35% more efficient because we can customize. We, we have, and we, we know what we need to do uh, to, 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 to exceed the requirements of the, of the, of the customer and, and, and the, the state requirements. So 
they were very happy and the end for them with data centers, their bottom line is, is how efficiently can I run my equipment and my data centers? It makes money for me down the line. So we've been uh, their, their, one of their largest suppliers. And I'd like to say we were on a job site in January. I went to a data center in Atlanta. Facebook's data center in Atlanta is two square kilometers at Fendulum. Two square kilometers. The only product on the entire job site that was not American was Tesla. And it was the only product, and it's a high, and pretty much critical. We're not talking to Windows or Windows or Screw. It's one of the most critical systems in that data center. So without us, the data center would not run. So it's something for, not, you know, of course, we're very proud of it for every Julian to be proud. But I have to go back to something that I, I keep saying, I'm sad to say it, but it's the truth. It's easier for me to sell my product as a Jordanian company in the United States than it is in my own country. It really is sad. I mean, especially with the government. I mean, it's, 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 you feel that they're, uh, they are trying to, you know, you're on your bike and they try to put a stick in your, uh, in, 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 your, in, your field, in your wheels. So it's, it's the, the, again, I agree. The mindset has to change. The mindset has to change. We have to think about how to develop and grow our industries, not just that, uh, all the different industries we have at our disposal locally. And then focus on your local investments. People, people always have the rhetoric has been in the past 20, 30 years is focus on foreign investment, focus on foreign investment. Okay, that's great. But what about the investors who are already in your country who are going nowhere? I mean, it's, it's, you got to take care of your own before you focus on that. Uh, it's, it's, it's not just you know, focus on the foreigners. And so it's. Um, I think it's, 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 we have to do it ourselves. I mean, again, right now my bread and butter is the U.S. market. It's my number one market. 40% of the U.S., 40% of our sales go to the U.S. right now. And our latest customer is Tesla. Uh, again, our second largest customer in the U.S. is a company called Vantage. Vantage Data Centers. They are the fastest growing data center supplier in the United States. And their sole source is Tesla. They don't even price data centers. We work with Tesla and only Tesla. If you go to the website, all the equipment for the air conditioning is done. But that's a happy customer. So I urge everyone, uh, whatever industry you're in, I mean, I, I had customers last week, about 15 people come to inspect their equipment from Facebook. They came in to Jordan and they spent about uh, eight days. And you know, they came to see the factory and we did the factory rooms test and everything went great. But uh, I took them, you know, we have to take them all around to uh, around the city, around the different locations, do some shopping. So it's the first time I ever walked into it, because I always use the products. I took it to the soap house, Trinity, as an example. I was so proud. They were blown away. This is something that you it's, it's ready to export right now. And, and, and not just export, export on a massive scale. The example of, of our Dead Sea products. Uh, I think uh, our neighbors, uh, their, their business is almost close to a billion dollars of exports in Dead Sea products. And how much are we? I'm not sure the number. I think it was a 50 million. Yeah, so I mean, it's one dead sea, two sides. I mean, why can't we at least get 100, 200, 300, and what's the problem? And that's jumped on the ground overnight. So I, I just don't understand why these entities aren't using tools like Amcham and different uh, chambers of industry to, to help them export. For us, we did it on our own in the beginning, and of course, with the help of Amcham, like when, just like I don't mentioned before, we gotta spend money to make money. And uh, before we entered the US market, we exhibited our products at trade shows, which cost us a lot of money. And in certifications, started in 1994 until we sold our first job in 2000. So that's a massive investment, but that's where you have to uh, you know, put your money where your mouth is. And um, uh, a quick, quick example as well. Something we like to do is we, we, we urge everyone, our, our customers, not just in the US, to come and see the factory. It's my biggest, uh, biggest marketing tool. But another, my, my, my sole marketing tool is the country. When people come from all these different countries with their customers and they see Jordan, and they see Jordan through our eyes, not just like the tourists, they all become ambassadors of Jordan and what Jordan has to offer. So, on, 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 on every level, I mean, I just, uh, well, this is one of the customers that uh, last Wednesday, the funny story, that they called me on Tuesday, he was the first to be one of the top guys from Facebook. They called me at 11 a.m., they're like, uh, your customer, we have to deplane him, uh, there's, there's something wrong with him. I'm like, oh shit. So I go to the airport, pick the guy up, uh, I took him to Farah Hospital. And uh, we did the whole work I mean, We did the tests, we did the blood tests, the, uh, the CT scans and everything. It turns out the guy had kidney stones and he had passed one on the, on the plane. But alhamdulillah, he's a maqtub in that. 
But was, uh, he was uh, but, but he was so impressed. He was blown away. He's based in San Francisco. Uh, and he says, I've never been treated like this for me. I've never had this level of treatment in my entire life. So uh, now that I know basically what we do is we test the machines and we test our customers as well. <laughs> Whatever machine you want, we'll also do a test. Uh, but it, it made me proud that we, yeah. we have these untapped jewels that we need to tap into and really uh, use and, 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 and uh, help them grow. Uh, again, yeah, it was it was nice to have a complete. You know, that person I think will never ever forget this experience. He will always remember that Petra or Jordan had something better to offer than what he has available to him. Not just as a product, but also medical services. But uh, back to um, uh, I mean, I'm probably gonna answer a whole bunch of questions you have, but <laughs> but uh, again, back to what we're talking about with the government. I mean, uh, there's a lot of change right now. Uh, I believe there's two different types of corruption. One type of corruption, of course, is the corruption you see in the news and uh, all the mixed headlines. And there's the unspoken of corruption, is when someone does not do their job. That corruption is just as lethal. <laughs> we feel it, we see it, and we try to circumnavigate it. There's no way you can do it unless you have to go to the Wazir or the Mian Wazara, and then it's what it's. This, this is paralyzing us. Uh, and again, with public private partnerships or public private work. Uh, you feel that some entities just need to wake up and say, you know what, we're not here to rob you. We are on the same team. Uh, we are here working together to develop this country. Don't treat us like, if we slip up, okay, we slip up. Okay, we punish us. But it's not always coming in like, you know, it's always guilty until proven innocent. It's always that way, especially with the customs. Another example of customs that happened with the Facebook people. Uh, they bring in their own equipment to do testing to match our equipment as well, like sensors and, and electrical panels. So we had arranged with uh, the head of the customs, and we had a uh, kitab or everything, that they are bringing this with them. Now, the, tech, uh, sorry, the, the employee at the airport that got the uh, product, he did not want to let it go. He had to uh, We had to pay, uh, it wasn't that much, but the, 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 the concept of it means it's coming in with the customer. We have all the documentation. It's coming in for the customer to use it to test and take it back out with it. That's it. Uh, they accepted the fine, four, 500 JDs, 366 of those JDs was a fine, and the rest was uh, incentive for the Nulara Makum, or the Makum fee. And that needs to change. The, the way that uh, these government entities deal with, let's say, local investors, because eventually the foreign investors come in and they start building their factories and, and, and setting up, they're going to also hit these walls. And, that's, and they, that's in many cases, they're like, you know what, screw this, I'm out. Uh, sorry. Okay. For <laughs> sure. I, <laughs> I had a couple of questions, but you, answer, you answered them all. You know, I thank Lena Mumbi. She helped me to make my job easier today as a moderator. And I thank you. You know, you answered all the questions that we had. You know, at the end, this session is just a, broad, a brainstorming session where we can always have a fresh start. It's not, it's not wrong to, to restart at all. It's wrong to stop. We will never stop. We, I know we have some obstacles. I know we do have some issues. But uh, we believe today as a private sector that if we put our hands together, the governments will listen to us. They will not listen to Israel. No, I'd like to add just one quick thing. Just quickly, thinking on that, uh, we have another factory in the north of, north of Jordan. And uh, we have 20,000 square meters, of which 100,000 is developed. And we want to develop the other 100,000 square meters. So we're pushing through. And with the new blood that we have in the government, we've been able to move that faster. Move faster because we have people like Dr. Tarek Hamouri, like Muthanna. You know, I like to call them Mishra Excellencies, your awesomeness. You know, it's, it's, I think it's more uh, because they're on the ground. They want to help. They want to work. But you have these key people that really have the, the, the passion, as you mentioned, and the, the duty and the, and the willingness to, to, to contribute and, and, and work moving us forward. It is happening for us, and hopefully by the end of next year, we'll be hiring another 500 people in Mafraq. We'll add it to the 450 we have there already. So I think it's, we are moving on the right track with the right people, in the right position. Great. Uh, thank you very much, uh, my dear friend. Anybody have any comments or questions?